Hello, my friends, and welcome to the Midweek Encourager. Delighted that you've chosen to join us this morning and uh, pray that you're having a great day in the Lord. Uh, if you've got your Bibles, open to Matthew chapter 23, and we'll read a verse or two here in just a couple of moments. You know, when the, when the COVID pandemic struck, our church immediately began recording and posting online services uh, online sermons and this midweek encourager. And that was thanks to the the phenomenal skills and abilities of Pastor Matt and Pastor Ronnie, who had some experience in these things that I didn't have, but they were able to teach me. And, you know, I had never done anything like them, uh, but I was instantly hooked. All of a sudden, People from all over the all over the United States and Arkansas were watching me preach. My head was swimming with pride. Our viewer numbers went up and up and up, and so did my ego. They liked me. They needed my wisdom. Was this the beginning of a new and virtual career? Well, after the initial euphoria wore off, it I found out this was a whole lot like work. But it got me to thinking, why did that give me such a rush? Why did I obsess over uh, the, the production of these videos? Why did I obsess over that for days? Well, I was enjoying the, t the attention, just plain and simple. And for a brief time, there was the temptation to shift from preaching God's word and inspiring other people to come to Christ and to serve Christ, to putting out messages that might inspire them to, um, like me. Now, the difference is subtle, but it's critical. A little bit of self-exaltation, maybe even a little bit of <clears throat> self-worship. I sure didn't think of it like that at the time, of course, and I wasn't consciously wanting people to worship me, but I sure wanted them to like me and like my messages a lot. In Matthew chapter 23, Jesus was teaching the crowds about hypocrisy and humility. And he was using the, the Pharisees as his example. Verse number 12 uh, reveals to us what will ultimately happen to those of us who choose self-exaltation self over humility. Verse tw uh, chapter 23 and verse 12 tells us, uh, verse 11, the greatest among you will be your servant because whoever exalts himself will be humbled and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Jesus was saying that if we try to put ourselves at the center of our lives instead of God being at the center of our lives, we will be humbled, just as I was when I came face to face with my subtle self-worship. Satan was the first one to try and receive worship that was meant only for God. And we see that in Genesis chapter three. And ever since Genesis chapter three, Satan has been convincing millions of people since then that self-exaltation, self-worship is the road to fulfillment. Here's the thing though, it isn't. Social media, can quickly become a place to seek validation, seek self-worth, to seek a way to draw attention to ourselves. But building a perfect life on social media 
is not sustainable. It's exhausting. And more than that, it's hopeless. It's hopeless. It will never fill the void that's inside of us when we feel less than or we feel left out. And that comes at a cost. It costs us peace. It costs us joy. And it costs us meaningful relationships with flesh and blood people that we interact with, with whom we interact day by day, as opposed to the virtual audience that we're trying to interact with. God created us with a natural desire for community. We need people. We need each other. But our hearts weren't created to handle the constant tug of trying to measure up to other people's expectations or even measure up to what we think are our new, our new expectations. Only God can bear the weight of that type of worship. The good news is our Heavenly Father loves us just like we are, whether, we have, whether or not we have an online presence. Because of that, we don't have to seek love or even likes from anybody else. If we're gripped by the draw of receiving attention and approval from other people, we've stopped focusing on Jesus. And we've denied Jesus his rightful worship, his rightful attention while drawing it to ourselves. And God says, if we don't recognize it and we don't humble ourselves, he is completely and totally capable of humbling us for his glory. God taught me a lesson. I hope it's a lesson that you can that, that I can pass along to you so that you don't have to experience the humbling of God like I did. God never intended for us to bear the weight of seeking our own approval. When we recognize that our approval comes from God, our approval comes from his face shining on us, we have complete freedom. We have complete dependence on him. I appreciate uh, the, the foundation of these thoughts from Brother Rob Singleton, and another, another pastor that I follow. And uh, hope this has been a blessing to you as it has been a blessing to me in reminding me of not only who I really am, but reminding me of whose I really am as well. May I pray with you? Oh, precious Father, thank you for your love for us. Thank you for <clears throat> your love that is totally unconditional, your love that is never ending. It never fades out. It never gets stronger. But your love is unchanging just as you are. Lord, I ask again, <clears throat> pardon, that you would forgive me for my little, my little bout with self-approval and self-exaltation. And I thank you that you've brought me back to where my focus is on you and not on me. Lord, I pray for my, my friends, my loved ones, my viewers today that they would recognize that as they're walking down that slippery slope that I walked down, they can stop before you have to humble them. God, help us to seek your honor. Help us to seek your glory alone. And we will thank you, thank you for it. 
In Jesus' name we ask, amen. Hey, thanks again for joining today. I trust that you've been able to worship God in these few minutes and that God has spoken to your heart. I hope to see you live and in person on Sunday.